So the exposure has to do with how light or dark the picture is. I get it. What's up guys? Today I want to do a video on Ilford's HP5 disposable camera. Now I want to kind of preface this with I'm not a disposable camera kind of guy, right? I, I don't shoot these things all the time. I know there's like a, a group of people who really they love them. You know, they, they shoot them all the time and, and that's their, their go-to thing, right? That's but that's not me. The reason that I have one of these is I wanted free shipping. I I basically was uh, loading up on, on film and, and you know development supplies and stuff, and I, I needed to just get a couple more bucks in my cart before I could get that free shipping from B&H. So I'm sure we've all been there, right? A couple dollars away from that free shipping, so you just throw in useless crap that you don't need. Well, that that's this guy, pretty much. I, you know, I didn't need it. I wasn't looking for it. I thought, what the hell? I'll try it anyway. So in the cart it went. I'll go over the, the specs and, you know, do like a quick overview, share my thoughts, experiences with it, and actually, I did a, a comparison, you know, just kind of out of curiosity between this and I also shot some HP5 in my uh, SLR alongside it, uh, just to kind of compare. Now, we're not talking anything scientific here, you know, no, no technical analysis on, on the, the images. Uh, it's basically just a side-by-side -side comparison on this compared to an SLR. And, and you can probably guess there's going to be an image quality difference. You know, that's like a given. But again, just out of curiosity, I did that and show you guys how to take it apart in case you want to develop what's inside. Because at the end of the day, actually, there's a roll. Literally, a roll of HP5 is in this thing. So when you crack it open, you know, you could develop this, you know, just like you would any other roll. So jumping right into the overview, which I could probably wrap up in, I don't know, 20 seconds, because it's really, it's, there's, there's two buttons, that's it. One is on the front side here for your flash, and the other is on the top side, which is for your shutter, and that's it. And to operate, dead simple. Wind it until it stops, click your button, that's it. If you want to engage the, the flash, you're going to go ahead, that front button, you hold that in, you look at the back, eventually that LED will light up, and then your next shot fired will engage the flash. Uh, if you don't want the flash, then you just advance and then click. But every time you want to engage that flash with a shot, you do have to hold that front button. So that's it. I mean, it's it, it doesn't get any easier. And, you know, people that are buying these disposables, back in the day, I, you know, I know somebody personally who... You know, she just bought disposables exclusively because they were that simple. She wanted to take pictures and she didn't want to mess with anything. And, you know, disposable quality wasn't really a, a concern for her. So, you know, disposables were, were the way to go. So it, it works for some people. Uh, now I know people get them because they, they want the, the lack of quality, but, uh, but that's a whole other story. And like most disposable cameras, you know, all your settings on this are going to be fixed. You have a, a 30 millimeter fixed prime lens. Your shutter speed will be consistently 1 100th of a second, and your aperture is fixed at 9.5. Of course, we're shooting on ISO 400. So that's pretty much the gist of it. And so your results on this thing are pretty much going to be dependent on where you're shooting, you know, and if you're using the flash or not. You know, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Are you indoors? Are you outdoors? You know, that's really going to have a, a big impact on your exposure. So, you know, one thing that I did is I taped a filter to the front of this because anytime I'm shooting black and white, I'm, I'm usually using a colored filter. But you could do the same thing if you're outside and it's crazy sunny, you know, you are shooting 400. So if you have a small ND filter, like, you know, one or two stops, you can pop that on top there and, and kind of control your exposure, um, you know, or, or not, you know, just shoot it as it may and, and just, you know, see how it lands. But 
those are a couple ways that you can kind of kind of tweak it just a little bit in, in case you want to kind of adjust the exposure. And I mentioned earlier about doing a, a quick comparison between shooting with this and then also shooting through an SLR. You'll see the focal lengths are a little bit different between the, the 30 millimeter of the disposable and then I had a 50 millimeter prime on my F100. You know, but all of the settings from the disposable I translated onto the role of uh, HP5 in my SLR. And, you know, exposure wise, it, it pretty much nailed it. I mean, it, it looks pretty much spot on. But if you look at the disposable, okay, around the edge, I mean, there's some heavy, heavy just blurring going on, okay? You know, you have a, a some, somewhat sharp center, uh, but then after that center, it just is gone. Uh, whereas in with, with your 50 millimeter, you know, in an SLR, it's pretty much sharp, almost corner to corner. So again, you're not buying these things for the image quality. It's for the fun or the convenience factor. Now I've already finished shooting with this camera and uh, popped out the film and, and developed that. So I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll show some of these images now. And just to, as a heads up, I did use an orange filter, I think with the majority of these images that you'll see. So, you know, if you are shooting with this, you can kind of expect a little bit less contrast, you know, unless you're, you're gonna supplement with some kind of a filter or whatever over top. All right, guys, so let's crack this puppy open. There, like I said earlier, there is a basically just a roll of HP5 in there. Um, I do want to make one you know, precaution that there is a battery and there's a capacitor right in here, okay? I've already cracked this open, so you're gonna kind of see this isn't together and it'll probably come apart a lot easier for me than it will for you because I've, I've already you know, taken it apart. But just, you know, take note that you do not want to touch the capacitor or any of the electronics on the front, okay? You could wear gloves, uh, but you'll get zapped is, is what it is, and, and it won't, won't feel nice. It'll feel like a bite or a bee sting or something. Um, it, it'll suck. Anyway, the capacitor is going to be over here. These, these, two, these two wires, you could probably crack them open, see? Right, right in here, okay? Do not, do not touch these when you open this up. Just fair warning. All right, so what we're gonna do is, you'll notice around the bottom and the sides of the camera, there's little pry notches, okay, like right here. These are little plastic clips that are holding that side. There's one here, and there's a couple here. And all you're gonna do, okay, is you're gonna take a screwdriver, and we're gonna, you're gonna, Pop it in there. Okay, gonna crack that side. Same thing with the other side. Screwdriver, pop that. Okay, just lift it up enough to where that tab comes. And again, this is coming apart way easier for me because I've already broken it. Under here, I had to lift this up and then I slid that. Okay, those little holders there popped. Okay, and then this face is gonna lift off. Again, taking note, do not touch the capacitor. Okay, it's gonna crack open. There's your top. Okay, here's your battery. You can pop your battery out first, like that, and that is gonna disengage your flash from working. Uh, it's not a bad idea to short the capacitor to make it safe to touch. So you're gonna take something with a plastic handle and metal and then just go across those contacts. You might see a spark, but that's okay. As long as the battery is taken out first, you can then short the capacitor, boop, like that, and then it's, it's safe to touch then. After that, this face, okay, that face is no longer <laughs> workable. Take, and we're gonna pry this piece out. The back and oh, there's the gold in the back I see the gold here it is and then you have your roll of HP 5 and then you know develop it normal uh, one thing you definitely want to do is 
before you take this thing apart, and you could do that in the daylight, you know, that's something to note too. Because this is a canister inside everything, this doesn't have to be done in the dark. Just make sure that you wind this forever because you, you don't want any of your spill, you know, your film exposed because when this is put in, all of your, your film is actually, you know, pulled out. So when you're exposing and rolling, it's, it's rolling it back into the canister. So uh, just make sure before you crack this open that you just go crazy and, and, you know, be extra precautious to roll everything back into canister and then you can open it in the light. And, and that's it. I mean, you know, send this into your lab or take it to your darkroom and, and develop normally. All right, guys. That's pretty much it. Um, obviously, you know, what, you, what you're left over with, some people actually go through and they try to reload these. I know some of the, some of the Lomo ones you can go through and you can, you can reload them fairly easily. Um, this looks like it would be a little bit of a pain in the butt to do. So my final thoughts with Ilford's HP5 Disposable. I did enjoy shooting with it, but I don't know that I would buy another. I shoot film because it's fun. Okay, it's a very tactile experience. I, I enjoy doing it. But part of me, you know, is still kind of value conscious. And, you know, one person could, you know, you really could argue shooting film in general is just not value conscious. And I would agree with you. It, it's not, you know, when you compare it to digital. But even more so with these disposables. Because you're paying twice the amount of money and, and you're getting less quality. But, you know, and again, if you're more in for the convenience and the experience, then this might be the way to go. So that about wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. Every couple days we come out with new videos. Some are how-tos, some are overviews. Uh, everything's pretty much film photography related. So if that's your kind of thing, go ahead, click subscribe, and you'll get the latest and the greatest. Till next time, we'll see you. It's basically ready to shoot. You know, you pull it out and you give it a couple cranks and rock and roll. Rock, rock and roll. <laughs> Woo! English, zero.